The internationally acclaimed cinematographers Don McAlpine and Denis Lenoir were invited to the Australian Film, Television and Radio School to conduct a masterclass workshop in studio lighting. Don McAlpine began his distinguished career working on news, documentary and drama productions in the early 60s. Don went on to shoot some classic Australian features, such as Breaker Morant and My Brilliant Career, before turning his attention to Hollywood in the early 80s. He has since shot a host of US features, including Predator, Medicine Man and Patriot Games. Paris-born Denis Lenoir is a leading figure in the new generation of French cinematographers. His work on films as diverse as Monsieur Hire, Daddy Nostalgie and more recently the Australian feature Dingo has established Denis's reputation as an imaginative and effective cinematographer. The double workshop was designed to give students a unique opportunity to compare the work methods of two of the world's leading DOPs. Don and Denis each spent three days in separate workshops with the students and each lit the same set and actors for the same director. This allowed students to concentrate on the two individual approaches to lighting and coverage. Joseph Demian, the head of the cinematography department at the film school, had a script. He directed the actors and nominated four shots to cover the action. First thing we want to do is build up the walls a little bit. What do you read I approach this as a, a lighting workshop, not a directorial workshop. It's being a bit simplistic uh, to say that, but in truth, that's why I was here. Basically, to try to get the students to analyse the elements of the lighting within the scene. I think the concept was not to make it a period piece, to make it a, a con have a contemporary feel set in the 20s. In other words, not to go back and create a period feel. My brief was to explain the room as well. That's why we stuck to, uh, I think, basically 35 we almost used on every shot except a couple of close-ups. I have much more freedom about, I think, the lighting, which, because I proposed the day before jo Joseph to, do, to turn off the light at one point of the script, and he said, oh, yes, it, it, it would be a good idea. So, uh, of course, it was uh, more freedom. And also, I asked him if I had to show the, uh, the geography of the room. And he told me, uh, no, uh, there's supposed to be something before, so the, the audience already knows it. If you can rise, you will, uh, yes, a little. The set consisted of a dining room with a raised bay window, double French doors, and a doorway opening to a corridor that opens back into the main room near the stairs. The action is covered in four shots. The first begins at the table, where the four actors commence their hide-and-seek game. Then two exit through the doorway and cross the corridor, while the blindfolded actor finally traps the remaining actress at the bay window. One real advantage of this shot is, in actual fact, it's a film cut included in a move. You have one scene cut to a two-shot other scene. It's a very quick transition from that information shot into the drama of the story. So you, you, you get a lot of advantages. You get nice distortion on the people, you'll cover the table using a wide-angle lens, you'll have a minimum move, and, and when they move away from you particularly, you'll have a quite a wide scene establishing shot of the room. So we'd start with the yellow Mac up here and we'd, we'd be looking down, which wouldn't be a bad shot of the table. And when we pull back, we wouldn't be a bad height for the principals. Yeah. All that has to go is this, and I think that's secured by, uh, I can see one screw there, one screw there, so it's not, not a major set destruction. You can see what we've done so far. We've rip this apart, uh, we've given ourselves room to work. And I think that's one mistake we all make very early in our career. Give yourself room to do good work. Don't, I mean, don't for the sake of 10 minutes moving stuff around, get yourself trapped in a corner. Next thing, we've, we've set the dolly up here so we can look down on the table with a 25 mil and then track back and, and see the two shot. The only problem is, with this, this gear, even though we've got the low angle Ronford, is that we're starting to get a 
just marginally high, but we're right on the edge of where we should be for the actor's eye line. We're just a little above their eyes. But these are things you've got to really got to think about because when you start using things like dollies and grips and all the rest of it, if you can really rationally go through where you're going and, and learn to start using tape measures and know that your gear will give you this will be your minimum lens height and you, you go back and you really work it out before you start wasting a lot of people's time and effort because to get all this in and then find it doesn't work is a real, real waste of everyone's time and energy. Okay, you ready to go? Yes. <coughs> The actors are brought on set to block through the action. A video split enables the group to watch the framing and see exactly what action they are to light. With the framing set, Don then turns his attention to the practical lights. Around about here, we get one four of light off these. The first thing we can do is play with these and take them up to about two... two... Um, oh, I've got to be careful, 270. Yeah. And just just watch what happens when you when you, you apply two seventy to these. Okay. Now two sixty, two seventy. Now they they run. Sometimes they explode, but not very often. And that that's now got that up to about two. That's max, by the way. Yeah. Yep. What, two there? Uh, no, two, two other. No, over here, where I'm on my hand. Oh, There's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, right. two. Two. What do you read back on that wall there? Yeah, it's one. One. We have the back of the set lit more strongly than the foreground. Convention says that you keep the background <laughs> down a stop. I think a, a convention's not a good thing to go by in that regard. Uh, in this instant, you'll find that with all that detail back there and the perspective we're getting and the way it's fallen, it'll be rather nice to have that brighter in the background. And this is what I love to do with lighting, is do what we've done and bring in the practicals the way the room would roughly be and then look at it and say, now, is this working for me or is this working against me? And most times it works for you because it, it, it can give you the clue on how the scene would, should look realistically. It so happens that when you come over the table and come back up here, uh, a few things happen. You end up on this side of it. So we're immediately presented with the possibility of, on the foreground people, of introducing a pretty strong side source here that they'll believe. You could use a small soft light, which would be out of frame here, and bring that in to key them. The, the next thing is, of course, we do have to get some base fill here and we're going to have to put some rather diffuse source here. They're the basic simplistic elements that I see within the scene. Now, we've got to build up the whole ambience in this room, I'd say about a stop, but we want it to be non-source light. So, to get this plan underway, we're going to have to produce some sort of a bounce from here to go back into that area, probably a four by four on a C-stand up there, and just to keep the floor clear for the actors, bring a spot from over there onto this. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, that, that will then light that area, and she won't throw a shadow, particularly. And the fact that she, she'll warm up around here doesn't matter, because by then, we're over into here. Right? The other thing is whether, if we get back here on a, a small soft light with a grid on it, we got a 1K soft? That will be just the basic start of the lighting, right? Uh, that's not the... Then I've got to look at it and dress it from there. The first step Don took was to increase the voltage of the practical lamp above the table from 240 to 270 volts. This raised the output of the two photo crescendo bulbs from F1.4 to F2. He reduced the flare from the lamps by applying carbon with a candle. Then to cover the action in front of the table, Don used an inky with a 300 watt Mizar lamp as a key, and another bounced on foam as a fill. To increase the overall ambience in the room, Don bounced a grid mounted 1K spot from a large piece of foam. Near the stairs, he added a 1K soft light. 
In the next sequence, Don will fine tune this setup, adding a soft light suspended over the table, an additional soft source from outside the set and by adjusting colour temperature. This one. Even though the practicals were being run at their maximum voltage, their colour temperature was still considerably warmer than the studio lights. To achieve a more even colour balance, most of the studio lights were gelled with a one-quarter CTO. So then everything's quite orange. Yeah. And if you didn't didn't want to be that orange, would you tend to correct well, I, that? I, I can print that into a blue, blue night scene if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, but so but you, I'm just asking, where would you correct that? Would you correct it on the camera or in the lab? Oh no, I'd always correct it in the lab. Right. I certainly wouldn't start putting a blue on the right, camera. I just right. lose speed here. Yeah. Here. One one four point five. 4.5. Flood it just a little bit. What do you got there? Keep your so meter in there. Right. While, while the guy's on a light, you've got so to keep working. Yeah. 1.43. 1 1.43. So that's uh, that's good. And that's that's a. That's good, Joe. Right. Okay. So are we going to gel that light, though? Yeah, we are. Sorry, you've caught me out. Right, gel it and spot it. We're just waiting for the gel now, though. Okay. What are we getting over here? This this is still we haven't solved our trouble area. Is that bounce giving us much over here? Uh, half 1.42. If we let them come out here for what's the major part of the scene, uh, they're sort of vanishing. They're not relieved. A little bit of relief from this side. I'd sneak a very, very gentle light, unexplained, in here, which will give them just a little edge down here. We're never going to see in the corner of that room, so I don't have to excuse it, right? And if we had it, it wouldn't really worry me. And the other problem still I haven't solved is what to do with this bloody table. What do you got down there? It's all building up now. Two five. Two five. This shadowed area here, produced by the... Um, one four three. One four three. If anything's overlit in this whole scene, mm. I believe the table should be. And the table isn't quite yet telling the story. It doesn't look like one of the great nights, mm. right? Candles We've got the candle lights to come. That would help. The other thing we could do would be actually hang a, another light mm -hmm. uh, on either side of this. And, the, and the, one of the greatest uh, things I always have is a, is a full range of those Chinese lanterns. They're easy to rig and they, you can hang them on nothing. What I'd be confronted with would be bringing in two small soft lights uh -huh. with diffusion, directing them down. Right? Yeah. Which, which mechanically is quite a difficult thing, yes. particularly in this situation, right? Yeah. Um, you could, uh, I don't know where your edge of frame is, whether we could boom something in to get it over there uh, and, and direct it down on the table, but the light should come down. What stop we got there now on that? It still looks a bit bright. Mm. Yeah. 288, oh, 280 maybe. Okay. What's that now, 2? Two? 288. Mm, I like the look of it, don't you? Because this light here has been diffused as it is and it's not boxed in mm. around the sides, isn't that really starting to shed a lot of light out onto elsewhere and really flatten things out as far as the actors are concerned? It is building up, right? And remember that the camera's looking this way. Okay, do it. Pull it. Okay. It's building up the whole scene. There's no two ways about it. But not... It's still a backlight for what's our principal action. So it's not going to sort of destroy the scene. It's not throwing a lot of light on the wall over there. It really is still just pouring down here. That's what I think. To make the dinner plates appear whiter, the overhead soft light was not gelled with one quarter CTO. And action. <laughs> Once the lights were placed, another rehearsal was held to make final checks. We need um, one little trim. This thing isn't in the right spot. She, did you notice that? A big trap. Everyone sits there watching the video. Watch, watch the scene. Video will get you in a lot of trouble. What happened there was he covered 
purr entirely because that's too low. So we should lift that uh, quite considerably and maybe even bring it around a little bit there. Just for lighting, could we check your meeting positions, the two of you, the, the blindfold tying position? So we've got big problems. We've still got to keep coming, I'm afraid. Damn. Bring it, bring it to there. Just, just hit, hit me while I'm looking. Okay, that's 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 good. Uh, we don't need that much, but uh, you can almost do it from that stand, I think. I'll just get this supported first, and then we'll get a reading. Most rehearsals, but the last one, you didn't get to the position where you blocked the light on her. You did on that last one. So just be a little, come around as far as you can without getting in the way of this. Where you are now is quite okay. We do want to get her around a fair way, but there's a limit to uh, how far we can do it. Action! <laughs> Don used the workshop to demonstrate solutions to a range of common lighting problems. The first problem the scene presented was the practical lamp above the table. Using the latitude of the stock and by subtly adding lights to this dominant source, Don successfully used the practical to provide interest and dimension to the lighting design. The strong backlight it creates for the foreground actors is supplemented by the careful use of the key and fill lights Don placed. When the actors move away from the table, we can also see the effect of other practicals and lights Don positioned near the stairs and off the set to camera left. When Denis Lenoir came to light this same scene, he was to take a markedly different approach. Denny was very conscious that his workshop followed Don's, and before he started to light the scene, Denny requested two major changes. He modified the action to include the interior lights being switched off by one of the characters, and he also removed the overhanging practicals, <laughs> replacing the one above the table with candles. My desire to change a, lo a, a lot of things was also because I was very impressed by working after Don, and wanted in a way to avoid this competition. So by doing it by night and turning off the light, I knew that it would be different. And also I would, I would like to add that I, I found it very weird to have this man with the candle in just plain light, uh, normal light on and the candle. I think the man would be, look ridiculous and the, no pleasure for the three of us. And I think it was the pleasure would be greater in more or less in the dark. So that's the reason, in fact, and not only because I wanted to cheat, uh, that I, dis I asked for uh, this thing. At this point in the workshop, Denny is observing the effects of the practical lamps on the lighting of the set. For instance, here, I like very much, which is the, the light which is done by this uh, lamp. The, the wall is already uh, quite uh, lit here, but darker around there because of the shade. Uh, it's stronger around here on the paint box. It's already perfect. So I don't know which stub would, would, would I have around here. But I would say for, I, I wouldn't probably measure, I, I want to measure it around here, which is an average place. And I have already 2.8, which is far enough. So that means that I don't need more lighting in this area for the moment. Maybe if somebody is staying here, of course, it will be very black and I will need something else. But speaking of the, of the set, it is exactly perfect as it is. And I think I would kill everything if adding some light. This, I think, by eye, is a little too strong. Mm -hmm. So probably we will have to dim it a little. This is obviously too dark. We will not be able to shoot <laughs> with only this uh, these things. Finally, yes, uh, uh, we choose for the, the, these two lamps turn off, and then when they, they turn off the light, we would keep the, the light coming on, from the corridor to the chimney. We would turn off these sup f three lamps, which is this one, the small one, and the suppose lamp around here. What I would like, but probably we don't have it here, is, you know, this Japanese uh, paper lanterns, and we can put in it uh, some uh, 250 uh, watt bulb. Uh, I'm thinking of this for, for this lamp uh, table, because it's going to be softer than that. 
we can put it just above the, uh, the camera line. And uh, we can also, with black uh, paper, cover some part of it. It's very useful and very cheap. <laughs> now I'm working uh, for the, uh, the apartment before they turn off some lights. So for the moment, it is like this. And then, when uh, we will turn, uh, turn off the light, this one, or maybe some, many of them together, at the same time, I will turn on the light coming from outside. Because in my opinion, when you are inside a, an apartment, a room, with the lights turned on, you don't see the outside, it is too dark, and you only see it when you, tur when you turn off. So you... Yes, one quite big around here to force up light there. One, so the first one would be like this. A second one would be like that here for this part of uh, the set. And uh, on the first one, we would use a red head quite far from it because uh, I would like to have the whole, uh, the light on the whole thing, not just a spot on the, on the corner of the, of the polystyrene. Uh, so a redhead for this, maybe uh, two redheads or, well, it's, it's better than one, uh, two case. Two redheads for the other one, which the one would be like that, for, the, this, way. for the, this way. <coughs> this would be with a smaller bulb, perhaps, or on, a, small one, on a, a dimmer. No. And maybe we could put a piece of whiteboard here and, uh, and uh, a Misa or 250 watts bounce on it, mm -hmm. just to give a little something around here. Uh, yes, we need definitely uh, something bounced on the third piece of foam to come around there, like this. Uh, Above the table, we will have our Chinese uh, lantern. This, we can uh, forget it. Denny had chosen to remove the practical overhanging the table, replacing it instead with candles, supplemented by a 250-watt photocrescendo globe in a Chinese lantern. By matching this lighting to the practical sources and utilising the speed of the 500 ASA stock, he was able to maximise the effect of the candles. The rear of the set was lit by 800 watt redheads and a 300 watt inky bounced off foam. 1K and 2.5K lights were directed at the glass door and windows. The 2.5Ks were switched on when the lights in the room were switched off. Finally, an inky lifted the level on the foreground actors. There's always a big difference between the, the tungsten uh, bulbs and what is they are supposed to, to be, which is uh, 3,200, and it is never 3,200, but most of the time this is 2,910. But it doesn't matter, it's just a question of, uh, because as they are all the same, it's a little more yellowish, warmer than required, but the lab will correct it. But the other thing is that uh, these practical lamps are warmer to uh, 2,500, so for instance, on this uh, lamp, we're gonna, uh, Yen, we, I think we will need uh, an 8 of 85. 1 8. Uh, yes, or. Smaller 35, I have uh, 1 quarter. Quarter, or, or, or a quarter, <laughs> to have the same color of what is, would come from there and, uh, and the lamp here. Otherwise, this would, would be uh, cooler. Okay, let's rehearse. Yep. <laughs> Apart from some fine tuning Denny is to make after this rehearsal, the lighting is set. The Chinese lantern above the table, the light from the glass door, the bounce near the camera and from the foam board above the set on the left are all soft sources building the scene. The effect of the handheld candles enhance these sources leading up to the moment when the lights in the dining room are turned off and simultaneously the 2.5K outside the door is switched on. 
Mary, can I please uh, have a look at you when you are uh, tight to in the... That's okay. Can I, have, can I have a look at you now? Looking more or less here, I think. Not me, but you look my, my hand, sorry. Yes, thank you, that's better. Thank you very much. Okay, Josef. The soft flickering light playing in the roses, the dancing flames and the reflections in the vase and the champagne bottle, and finally, when the camera slowly moves up from the table, the warm highlights created on the actor's face are all effects made possible by the fast stock and the removal of the overhead practical light. In the background, Denny creates highlights with light on the fireplace, the practical on the table, and the light filtering through the curtains. For the time the actors are in their forward positions, Denny's setup creates less contrast than provided by the overhanging practical used in Don's workshop. The soft light from the Chinese lantern and the bounced fill are the primary light sources falling on the actors' faces. This of course changes when the candles are reintroduced and the action moves away from the camera. Finally, when the lights in the dining room are switched off, the bounced light from the redheads above the set create the impression of a practical light source coming from the corridor. Spinning around, and I'll, I'll point where I think the camera should be. Come around. You should be around here by now. Keep coming. It's a pretty fast move. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Right up as far as you can. And you're holding. Yes. About that? Yes. Looking at the way these people play it, and they seem to play it best as a little ensemble group we'd be well advised to stay a little wider, okay? Now, the troubles begin. How are we gonna get this to be a little bit more interesting? We come right across here. We can't, we can't do anything other than use that practical. Uh, what's that giving us? Half 1.42. What can we put there? Nothing much. Can we? No. That, that'll solve our problems. Yeah, we'll put a 75 in there. See, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is if we can keep this up pretty high here, mm. then we have, you see the moulding? Yeah, we have yeah, a bit of something coming through. Uh, do you want to run that up to 1040 or Yeah. Yeah, uh, right, right, right up the top, see what uh, happens. Now, what do you got there? Two. Yeah, and what, what, you, you got two? Yeah, two, two, sorry. Two, two. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's a heap, isn't it? Yeah, and it's bringing out a bit yeah. more than and two, it's, two, and two, And, it, and it, does it look, does it look good? Is it going to look more interesting? Uh, yeah, I think so, you got, you got a graduation. Yeah. That's now, what, what, what fill are we getting from this, if that's a fill? Yes. Now go over near the door, because that's where the action's going to be. Now you're showing... I'm showing... You know, that's right. Watch, watch the shadow of your meter. See, yes. see the shadow of the meter on the wall? Yeah. You, know, you know what you're shading then. Yeah. Now you, now you actually... Yeah, right. What do you got there? Uh, it's 1.07. 1, 1. So I think we'll st probably still go back and maybe off your arm that you had that soft light on, put a bounce up here and come in a little bit, come over that, that wall again. And we'll probably just use a, a lot less of it than... Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I just... This will, this will have more drama in it than the scene, previous scene we shot. Okay, now what's that giving us in our base fill over there? Yeah. No, no, your fill. I feel sorry. Yeah, just, just, that's all it needs? Yeah. I'm getting one for... Four, I think you're in. What you get here? No, you're, you're right there. Don't. You're not, it's covered. No, you, you're covering the, the lights there. As long as you've got your back to that light, 
All this is now accumulated fill in actual fact. Uh, 144. 144. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so that's a stop and a half down the fill, and we've got two, we're a little bit. Uh, um, 205. <coughs> yeah, so we've got plenty of light back there. Come through and shut that door. That one, yeah. Okay. Now, what, what do you think we can do out there that'll be of some interest? There could be another door there where light is coming from. Uh -huh. it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to really be explained. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to be explained. Um, so what would happen if we just put a, an unexplained little inky up here and shone it straight through that doorway at a reasonable height? Is it interesting? Uh, well, I think, I think it could be more harder, maybe. Oh. Here we go, lighting by committee. <laughs> so that's all right. Actually, I, I have really have to see them in there. And, yeah. yeah, well, of course, they're not in it until they get to here. Let's have a look. That's only when they vanish back through. But then they get out of it. They'll close Please. the door. So that what you see is, is this. That's, that's what they do, isn't it, basically? Yeah, no, it's yeah. 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 So, so it might be a nice transition going out there, break the boredom. I think you could call on the principal to start rehearsing. We've only got this light to go in by the time they get here. We'll be ready. Don kept many elements from the previous setup. To improve the key light around the doorway, he increased the output of the small practical and then added to the fill with a 1K bounced off foam mounted above the table. Lights were directed at the scenic flats and as a final touch, a backlight or kicker was added to the light from the corridor. This one thing about looking at mine is this gives you contrast. And then Gives you nothing but framing. Yeah. yeah. If you start lighting to this, you're doomed. I'm not lying to it, but you can notice that. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 to, yeah, yeah. I mean, these things. Yeah. Yeah, I, did. I guess. But it's deceptive. You, you, what, you, what you feel has got to be is between that metre and the film. The rest of it's bullshit. As the camera moves through the second shot from Don's workshop, the relationship of the practical light sources can clearly be seen. When the action moves back to the doorway, we see the effect of the low angle key from the practical and the additional fill from the bounced light above. When the couple exit through the doorway, they are backlit by the light above the hall. track along like this, but uh, I mean the carpet's here, but we can get rid of that. Maybe um, we, we tighten in with them, we go in, so we, as we're, as we're tracking across like this, we track in, um, and as, you know, so he tracks past our frame and we end up tight, on the, like a tight mid shot on the door. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 50. Yes, in this case we would, we would keep on the, the 50. Mm. Cause yeah, because we, we start sort of quite wide. Mm. Then to Too sort of, wide in my case. Yeah, it is quite That's the reason I would like to, sh to shift for the 85. You want to go 85? You want to look at the 85? No, yeah. I, I would like to, yeah. to, to see with, with the actors, because I'm, I'm afraid it would be too tight for, for the second part. The second shot in Denny's workshop was filmed with the 85mm lens, and the same basic lighting configuration was used as for shot one. Changes, of course, had to be made especially when the actors moved into a previously unseen area of the set. OK, sorry. Uh, we get rid of this foam here. We just turn the red head. We put some 216 on it and go it there. Now, where is my friend? Uh, There's Ned up there. We want to let's cut down more. Yes. Hmm? We've got net on. Net on. It would be fine. This is no too much because uh, the backlights always seem stronger than the measure you have. I mean, for instance, if you have a, a, a light which gives you, you uh, two eight here, mm -hmm. and then you turn around the actor, you, 
the light is giving you two eight al always, mm. but uh, the angle on the skin makes it very more shiny. So to have the same effect, you have to take maybe two stops or at least oh, one see. on the backlight. So for instance, here, uh, the, the, the stop is uh, two, two eight, and here on them when they go out, I have a little less than two eight, it is two, two. two and a half, something like this. But if you look at my, at my from this angle, not from your angle, mm. but from this angle, it's very bright in fact, mm. you see? Because uh, more brighter than there, from there. Well, anyway. <laughs> so we, we turn off the 5Ks anyway here, and we're gonna do, go with the, the 1Ks, just to have a little effect on the curtains. Can it be uh, the 1K with open band doors, just to have uh, something on, on the whole curtain, on the top of ETS2, something like this? With this uh, 1K, I don't want the effect inside the room. I just need to have some light on, on the windows and curtains. Not too high, yes, more, not, not higher than that, because we need to go inside the room. Uh, what I've asked uh, Yen is to put two la lights uh, each time. At the same time, a 1K and a 2 5K. A smaller unit turn on when it is lit inside, and then at the same time we're going to turn off this for, and that. We're going to change outside for 1K to 2.5. Initially, the basic setup remained the same as for shot one. After a final check, Denny kept the 1K on and the 2.5K was added when the actor switched off the dining room lights. The light filtered through the doorway curtains, only supplemented by candlelight, the two bounced redheads and the one redirected down the corridor. What are you going to expose uh, at, Denny? I expose for nothing. I expose for the stop I had at the beginning of the scene. Which was 2.8. Which two, was 2.8. Two eight. Two eight. The stops where I, put my, where I put my meter and measure, it's quite the same or less everywhere. But uh, it's, if I put my meter there, there is 2.8. If I put my meter here, there is 2.8 more, uh, and there on the other side too. But at the same time, it is not too flat because I measure where there is some light. I don't measure where there is no light. So this is the difference between light and no light, which make the, the feeling. The soft light from the Chinese lantern over the table disappears when the actress switches off the lights, leaving only the light from the candles and the background effect of the bounced redheads above the hallway. Denny has made the corridor a source of light which will also provide a backlight when the couple exit later in the scene. When the actors reach the doorway, they finally enter the dappled light coming through the curtains that was meant to also illuminate them as they crossed. However, a student had added a new element, and Denny was determined to find the cause of this problem. I've discovered this morning something I don't like at all, about a flag which I didn't ask for, which is cutting an amount of light in a place where it's not supposed to be. So let's go there. <laughs> and I was on the other side and was very surprised, come on, come on, <laughs> very surprised to discover this flag, which I never asked for. It cuts the whole effect of the, of the lamp there, everywhere. The woman here was supposed to have some light coming from there when she turned off the light. You saw on the rushes, she, she hasn't. Of course, I should have seen it when uh, shooting, but I, I used to, I'm using to operate. I will probably, maybe not, but probably have seen it in the camera, but not uh, looking at the video. And the other thing is putting this flag here. So, of course, you kill this effect there, but you kill the light everywhere, and the rest of light you keep is just very underexposed because the flag is very close to the lamp, so he has no a cutting effect, it has just a drop effect. It has also a cutting effect, but it's a drop effect. If you wanted to, to kill the, the white light coming through here, the good thing would be to put just here, which, has, which was out of frame, a black piece of velvet or I don't know why, or I don't know what, and it would be perfect. You will have the effect without killing anything and without getting this door prevent to be open.
fortunately, this, the man had a candle in his hands, so even with, uh, without this light, it was okay. It, seems, it seemed okay. Uh, and I would say, unfortunately, because if he, if he had no candle, we probably all uh, noticed that he was <laughs> in black and go and, uh, and see what was the problem. We'll reduce the overall level. We're going to be very dependent on those candles coming down the hallway. So uh, we're reducing almost by a stop the illumination and we'll open the camera up half a stop. What we want to do is try to get a, um, a light coming down through here, keeping it as much off the walls as we can up to the doors and just backlighting their hair as they, they cross over. As though it's an extension of this light coming down that way. Now, if we let it spill on the walls, it's going to be enough backlight to to create havoc. Have we got a wire for that? If I put diffusion in it, it's going to spread. Mm -hmm. And there's spreads that'll go on the walls, mm -hmm. right? And I don't want that to happen. So that's why I asked for wire. And then we, we want to produce quite a strong light coming through both these, these doors. Maybe we should use a direct light through a frame, because though it's these practicals, as the light comes through and hits these walls, we're going to run into a, a, a bounce problem where we're, we're really trying to go for pretty low light level coming this way, coming from the camera. So we, we're into basically a silhouette sequence, and something like an inky with paper on it to do it and bring it down into the floor so we've got more control over it. If we got it back here, like we've done over there, we might run into trouble with, uh, with lighting, uh, with stray light. The other thing we could do would be bring down a, a harsh direct spot, which would pick this green up and would bounce, uh, just, just bounce a bit of good, ambient good, light around. Good shape for the yeah. leaves instead and of might, colour. Might, it might sort of serve Two purposes. It'll give some detail this area, but let it still, still, uh, dark. still go dark. To highlight the actors as they crossed the corridor, Don employed a 1K through a frame and positioned an inky behind the other doorway. An inky with a wire was positioned next to the corridor practical, and another was focused on the chair and plant in the stairwell. Then for the back wall, Don only needed to adjust the output of the overhanging practical near the fireplace. All right. So why, I'd say wind it back to 245. So, are we there? Yep. What's that read now? 14.6. I don't know whether I invented it, but I'm about the only one using it, and it's a system I love, because I use a Minolta now, and it's 14, and I say decimal six. Yeah, it really has worked well with assistance. They say, what do you mean, buddy? I say, see the meter? That's 14 decimal, see that point, decimal point? Yeah, six. Okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> and they do it. We usually uh, just go third open, third close, line open, line close. Well, I mean, well, well you, you, you're right. using, using a system that relates to metres that weren't as accurate. Mm. I mean, all you're doing is saying, going back to the old spectrometer where the needle, you know, had an eighth of an inch to register a variation of a stop. Right. Surely, Don, you've got to get the iris of the lens. Oh, no, no, that's, that's, I'm, I'm not worried about the iris of the lens. You're talking about lighting I'm, I'm talking about lighting levels. Right. 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 So, and I mean, it, you can, I still refer to the iris of the lens that way because it, it's a very, very definite way. And a line open on such and such is how thick's the line. For me to say decimal seven means, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's that way. I, I think it's a far more precise yeah. and con so less confusing way. Action! When the actors pass through the doorway, they are lit by the 1K from the dining room as if by the practical above the table. Then they are silhouetted against the background and highlighted by the inky and practical overhead. The splash of light from the practical on the wall to the right, 
the soft light it casts on the actress, and most importantly, the effect of the candles on the actor's face, were all made possible when Don used low light levels and opened up the lens. By fine-tuning the light levels in the back of the set, Don was able to achieve these effects and at the same time provide rich detail in the background. I'm, I think it's just a fix, more or less a fixed shot for the beginning of the action, which happens around there. And then, as the action will move to this place, we will just come closer. We just have to avoid, of course, the lack of wall there. I'm wondering, uh, Chantal, if uh, it wouldn't be better to go back to the 85, and then, because here we, what we are trying to do is to have the two doors yeah. on a fixed shot. Yeah. No, so let's go back. I don't know if it is good things to, to say, to tell, but exactly the, the kind of, sh of set, I mean, this corner and the, the shot we are doing here, yeah. which is quite boring to do, uh, not very, so easy to do properly, and you don't want to spend so much time on this kind of thing because at the end it is probably very short on yeah. the screen. So it's better to keep your time and energy for so something else, you... but at the same time, of course, the things we, where we are astonished by the lighting. Every shot is like in, on a commercial, yeah. which is very well done. Yeah. And in this shot here, we have more or less nothing. Yeah. We had yesterday the candles, we had the, the turn off, off and on. But at the same time, my uh, way of thinking when working on a feature film is not trying to have something on, in every shot. I would like, I would think at the time that uh, the photography would be overtaking. Uh, and I, I more or less I think that the script and the actors are more important that, uh, than the, this kind of thing. Yeah. This is not necessary for the, for the storytelling, but uh, as the, this frame is quite boring, perhaps with s some hard light and uh, highlight around these uh, things, it will be a little more funny or, or whatever. For the corridor scene, Denny kept the 1K and the 2.5K. In the other doorway were two inkies through a screen. Above the corridor, a redhead was bounced off foam and an inky focused on the hat stand. Further back was a practical and the same three redheads bounced off foam, this time with a net cutting the levels at the foot of the stairs. Since Denny used the corridor as a source of light in his previous shot, it was necessary to keep the overall levels higher than the previous scenes. By using a net across the foam as a scrim, he was able to reduce the light from the redheads falling on the actress, while the foreground remains dark enough to enhance the effect of the candles. The way I work is I like some overexposition on the daylight set inside, interior. So I, I, I put a strong light, like the same as with this street light effect, but it will be a sun effect coming through the window and uh, with a lot of light on a, um, how do you say, a bureau. Uh, but I measure with, I always measure with the, this incident lighting and I want it for instance, I don't know, I would say two stops overexposed. Yeah. So I set everything for to have a two stops reading, mm -hmm. of, uh, two stops overexposed reading on the, on the bureau. Mm -hmm. And this is okay with me. But in fact, if I wanted to be more precise, yeah. I would measure on reflection because it depends on the color of the bureau if the bureau is white or if the bureau is black, Brand. it is not at all the same effect mm -hmm. with these two stops of uh, overexposed incident reading mm -hmm. on the coming on it. Yeah. Does anybody has a grayscale around here? The amount of light you have, 2.8. Why 2.8? It is because we shoot here at 2.8, but it could be uh, decide to be 5.6 and measure what do you have at 5.6. Mm. Nine. Yep, and it's got, yep. Nine, one third, nine. Nine, and no, it's just, it's nine. Nine, okay. okay. Eight, two dots. Okay. Two and yeah. eight. Okay. So now you measure in EV this part of the door. Right. 
And what do you say it is? So I, I two dots. A two dots? So it will have yeah. it will be like this and not like that, but you yeah. know that. Yeah. Not 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 he not this here. Mm. This in a pure uh, theoretical uh, exposure, which was 2.8, which is uh, the, an amount of light to have 2.8 yeah. with this incident meter, or 2.8 if you were measuring on the 18% uh, gray, gray uh, card. Yeah. Of course, it depends on the printing, mm. because perhaps you think that the face here is too dark, so you light everything and then it's going to be white. Mm. Uh, this is another thing, but yeah. theory took Theoretically speaking, yeah. at this stage, stage of your work, yeah. you wanted to know how this door would, would look, mm. and it would look like this, which is not white overexposed and so on. Yeah. And it is not, and the good, of course, yeah. the, the, the big mistake would be to close your stop, your aperture, as you more or less told me uh, later before, because <clears throat> this is more or less white. You want it to be more or less white. You don't want it to be uh, yeah, to be uh, like this, unless there's uh, darker and so on. Mm. But there is some light here, obviously. We should put a. Uh, a top light, uh, probably just one of the little inkies, hang down from the top of the set. In truth, if if we want to get some effect from this, it will have a visually more interesting effect the higher we get that light. If you put the light down here, it'll have minimal ridging effects, right? If we put it up there a bit higher, it, it's going to uh, spill, be more of a hair light. It's easier to avoid oh, the camera. And in truth, it, it's got to be pretty subtle because it, it, it is a, a light that is a lie. I mean, it's a light where we're partially excusing by this source, but if it was strong enough, it would be obvious it wasn't this source and, and give away a false light source. In addition to the inky and practical in the bay window, Don added an unexplained source created by an inky bounced off foam. The light coming from the dining table practical was again supplemented by the overhanging 2K soft light. For Don's fourth and final shot of the sequence, the camera returns to the table. The overhanging practical is again dulled with candle carbon to reduce flare. It highlights the actor as he approaches the table. Subtle highlights on the hair and shoulders of the actress are provided by the inky placed above the lampshade in the bay window. When the couple finally meet, the low level of the fill light allows the actors to be lit by the intimate glow of the candles. Finally, in the resolution of the sequence, the camera returns to the table, lit by the practical and overhead soft light. I'm wondering with this uh, painting, because it looks like daytime on the paintings because of the sky, probably we will need the 255, which is already here on the window, to have it perhaps more in reflection on a whiteboard, because it will just go... The idea with this is not to go <coughs> everywhere on the set, but just here, when we'll, they will be there. So maybe here, something like that. Yes, and have here a big poly and have the light bounce there. I've put some uh, bounce light instead of uh, direct light as uh, here or there. So uh, I think it's quite nice here on the actors. In Denny's fourth shot, he directs the bounce light from a 2.5K and the direct light from a 1K through the windows. To lift the fill level, a redhead is bounced off foam. Again, the lights through the doorway curtains and the redheads near the stairs are used. The double wick candles the actor carries become the feature of Denny's final shot. By maintaining a low light level in the room, the effect of the candles can be observed on the white railing and on the wall. As the actress slowly moves back, she is silhouetted against the bay window. Gradually, 
The warm glow from the candles illuminates her face as the actor draws near. This romantic effect is heightened as she playfully extinguishes each flame, leaving only the highlights created by light streaming through the bay window and the soft fill from the room. To finish his workshop, Don McAlpine demonstrated an approach to lighting a close-up. You can call it glamour, you can call it sexuality, but the result's the same. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying, trying to make her look particularly interesting, right? And, and so bringing this eyeline in will. It's, it's in truth about the most attractive light you can use, mm -hmm. uh, as long as it doesn't flatten out. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're just going to really diffuse it down and just yeah, give it a yeah, little glimmer. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, just read this hot side. Right, no, to the light, not to the camera. We're, we're not, we're not getting an exposure. We're checking the lighting. It's a different ideal. Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Okay. And what do you get? What do you get out of this fill? Now, drop it back no. on the other side of her head. See, if you go there, that's the field. You're making the mm -hmm. ratio. Good. Yeah. It's not the two. Two. Yeah. two. Okay, that's still a four and a half, still quite a dramatic ratio. Uh, we can take this light a little further away. What's that doing now to the light? Oh. <coughs> yep. Two eight. Two eight there now? Uh, four. Four. And this, this, the, but this, this light is... That's the light that's actually shining on This light is actually quite a happy mistake. You see what this light's doing up here? Mm. Yeah. It, 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 it's giving a moulding down on, on this cheek, mm -hmm. which I find quite attractive and separating the hair. Yet it's all totally excusable because we know this strong source is over here. How's the ratio look now on a face from the... Uh, flash the eye light on and off and see, see how the ratio should be a little better. How's that look? Oh, that's very good. Yeah. The trouble is now, very to diminish much. this, right, uh, it's become a little flat, mm -hmm. and also there's a certain unattractiveness being introduced by the, mm. the side kicker on the nose. You see, yeah. on the, I'm sorry to talk about you like this, but well, so, it's, it's a, well. so as, as we come in here, yeah. that, that improves, doesn't mm. it? In some way, this light and that light is starting to work together, right? Mm. As I take this one out, yeah, no. that light works against us, right? Put this in and pull the other one. See, it's, it's nowhere near as interesting, is it? No, no you need that. See, it, it's become sort of a... So you, you need both of them at this level. Yeah. And the only way to decide the level is nothing to do with meter, but just keep fiddling up till you see it, right? Remember when we looked across the table, she was very brightly lit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got to sustain that effect, right? So, in truth, I would expose at about... Oh, what, what do you get directly back here, about 285? Just straight back at the camera. 28. Now, now you're reading for exposure. Right in front of the nose, is it? Yeah, that should have been. But it should be in the same. Two. Two? Two, Two no. in front of the nose. The Sorry. Drag it over. Drag across it over center. across the nose. No, you, you're pointing across. it at you, you're not pointing at the camera. camera. It's critical where you point that thing. Point now, it. we're lighting a face. These lights are in close, not good enough. You've got to be right back, right back on a nose, yep. right back on a nose. You just say, excuse me, and smash it right in. And realise that the worst thing you can do for the person there is screw up the lighting. It's much better to be a little inconvenient and, and, <coughs> and business-like and do it. So you've just got to get in and do it. How was it? 28.1. decimal one. one. So we shot this at 28.3. decimal three. It should be all right. Okay? So let's do it. Now you've got to remember how to act. Draw this mic around. Each DOP had their own personal style, and the workshops had given the students an insight into their individual approaches but there were also similarities. Both DOPs started with a practical light source and used them as the basis of a naturalistic lighting design. Where the two diverged was with the use of the overhanging practicals. 
Don took on the problem of practicals in shot, whereas Denny took a consciously different approach, featuring instead the light from the candles. The aim for both was to provide as many learning opportunities as possible. How does the footage compare? You can be the judge. Thank you.